Uh, hello everybody, hola a todos. Uh, aquí es a Rubén Gastambide Fernández, uh, grabando desde Toronto. Uh, recording this from, uh, from Toronto. Very excited to be part of this conversation. And I'm here with two uh, students here from OISE uh, who are going to be helping me uh, make this video. Uh, before we start, we want to share with you and acknowledge that the work that we're doing right now, uh, sharing with you, uh, we are speaking and so we are situated within the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, uh, of the Huron-Wendat uh, peoples, uh, of the Métis, uh, uh, the Métis Nation of Ontario, uh, who are the, the traditional peoples of the land uh, in which we're speaking, from, from which we're speaking, uh, which is now known as, Tor as Toronto within the context of the Canadian, the Canadian nation state. Uh, I also want to say uh, for everybody, uh, just as a way to kind of situate myself, I am originally from Puerto Rico, which is our, our you know, probably the last, the last standing colony in the in the American uh, continent. Uh, and so I speak about colonization both from my experience as a colonized subject, as a diasporic colonized subject, and also from my experience as uh, somebody who's arrived here in Canada and who is uh, working to be in relationship with indigenous people uh, here in the territory of, of Caronto. I'm going to introduce you really quick to. Uh, the two other uh, fellow students who are here um, who are going to be contributing to our conversation and then we'll tell you what we're going to do in a second. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Vasquez Jimenez in regards to situating myself here. I'm an Afro-Latina uh, born in Toronto to Colombian parents and when I uh, think about uh, myself on this territory, I definitely um, am thinking of settler colonialism and how I'm implicated and responsible and accountable to indigenous peoples of this land. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Henrietta. Uh, I speak decolonization through exile and displacement. Uh, I speak from a position of colonized and colonizer. Uh, rooted in Europe between East and West and uh, here we are on indigenous land okay so just so you know what, what we've done here is we've created a little bit of a of a diagram uh, to that illustrates the conversations that we have been having about colonialism and decolonization and about the idea of decolonizing the curriculum and what we're gonna do is just have a conversation through this uh, to share with you some of those ideas for about 10 minutes uh, and to address some of the questions that hopefully we'll be having uh, uh, next week. Uh, so una vez más en español, solo para repetir, que lo que vamos a hacer es tener una conversación entre nosotros tres sobre los detalles del diagrama que hemos puesto aquí en la, en la pizarra que representa de alguna manera eh, las ideas y las conversaciones que hemos estado teniendo sobre uh, la colonización, la colonialidad, la descolonización y cómo esto está relacionado a, al currículo a, y a la experiencia educativa, ¿ok? Entonces, uh, si sí, vamos a, en algunos momentos hablaremos, sometimes we'll talk to you, but other times we'll just be in the background. Otras veces estaremos hablando en el trasfondo. Espero que, que sea de alguna ayuda, entonces. So, uh, so we start with uh, defining, we want to begin the conversation by talking about what is colonization um, as a way to eventually make a way to to curriculum, and we've been talking in the, uh, we've been discussing the idea that uh, colonization is fundamentally a structure of exploitation, um, and it's important to specify that it is a structure. Here we're drawing on the work of Patrick Wolf that colonization is a structure, not an event. So colonization is not something that just happens and then stops happening. It's something that uh, happens over time and that has to continue. It's a process of that has to continue happening. And it's specifically a structure of exploitation, exploitation of land, uh, exploitation of human bodies, and exploitation of natural resources. And that's sort of where we started our conversation. Right. Yeah, and so one of the other things that uh, we were speaking in a group was really having this um, in mind about whether decolonizing the curriculum is even possible and what are the possibilities and impossibilities. And so as Ruen had uh, mentioned uh, what colonization consists of, uh, we also spoke about how it is op 
operated through. And so um, below we can see that it's operated through force, ideology, discourse, and culture. And essentially, uh, Edward Said, uh, from his uh, book, Culture Imperialism, uh, also speaks to the structure of attitude and feeling. And that ends up uh, going into coloniality, which is also connected to power and subjectivity and one's being. Um, then from there, we drew to decolonization. Uh, we tend to see or define decolonization as removing structures of colonization uh, in the context of uh, it, both in context, history, and culture. Uh, we also had a lengthy discussion about what counts as, as decolonization acts and whether we think of decolonization as a grand event or um, a grand performance of some sort or. Uh, very small gestures that uh, are sort of that may seem at first insi insignificant, but how the small ge gestures become collective. Um, so then we we went into thinking about what counts as decolonial work um, in terms of practice and curriculum. So, so just to kind of re return to some of the parts of the structure. Uh, one of the things that is very important to underscore is that colonization is a structure that happens in very specific places and in response to specific kinds of exploitation. So even though we can speak it, about colonization sometimes in general terms, it's important to remember that how we think about colonization and therefore how we think about decolonization very much depends on the specifics of what colonization looks like. Uh, and, and we have to acknowledge that there are different kinds of colonization. So we talked about external colonization, where an external power uh, seeks to control the resources, whether they be human bodies, land, or natural resources in another place. Uh, internal colonization, where there's a dynamic of power that occurs within the bounds of a national sovereign state. Uh, and then in the case of Canada, and for us very important, is the question of cellar colonization, which is when an external force arrives in a, in, in a new land in order to stay, when people arrive in a, in a territory to stay, uh, where, where the relationship to bodies, for example, is not one of exploitation, but is one of genocide. So in settler colonization, indigenous people have to be removed and, and eliminated so that the colonizer, the settler, can take over the land. And that's very different from the dynamics of external and internal colonization. So then the mechanisms of colonization in terms of force, ideology, and discourse, and culture, looks very different depending on what kind of colonization and, and the particulars of, of the context and the history and the culture of that particular situation. Uh, and so that's important because we don't, it's really, we discussed a lot the idea that uh, it's really difficult to theorize decolonization because decolonization is really a theory of action uh, that requires that we take specific kinds of steps uh, in, in context. And another thing that ended up coming up when we were trying to uh, differentiate um, acts, of decolon acts of decoloniality uh, versus acts of decolonization, essentially, in giving back in, in the land to indigenous peoples, uh, was this whole notion of not all forms of resistance are um, acts of decolonization. And that, essentially, we really have to uh, unpack more or less, especially in the context of in attempts to decolonize the curriculum, whether we are actually able to decolonize curriculum or whether these are just matters of being resistant to dominant narratives and structures. So in terms of de uh, decolonizing the curriculum, there's a lot of questions that uh, arise as to what, what uh, counts as uh, decolonizing work within the curriculum and what doesn't count as decolonizing work within the curriculum. And we came to um, kind of a vague conclusion that uh, decolonizing work within the curriculum has to tie to uh, one of the structures, the colonial structures of exploitation, which is either related to land, um, to exploited human bodies, or, or natural resources. But it's also important to mention that um, Doing anti-racist work, doing um, gender work, does not necessarily mean that it is decolonial work. Uh, 
So we want to zero in a little bit just on this corner right here about curriculum uh, to talk about decolonizing curriculum. And the first thing that we want to say is that uh, we want to draw a distinction between curriculum and pedagogy. Curriculum being educational experience, educational trajectory, and pedagogy given the set of educational relationships that shape that experience. And we also want to clarify that for us, decolonization is not the same as deconstruction. Deconstruction is a different project. Uh, and that in order to really answer the question, we have to make a distinction between decolonization and decoloniality. Uh, decolonization being the actual process of resisting exploitation, the different kinds of exploitation we talked about earlier, and the removing of the structures of exploitation. And so uh, on the other side, we have decoloniality. And uh, one of the things we were speaking about that it uh, pertains to decolon decolonizing the mind, the spirit, um, the subject and knowledge and so one of the ways particularly that I uh, we do this in community um, is essentially being able to uh, reaffirm and recenter African and indigenous identities by looking at the narratives that are not necessarily Eurocentric and uh, another thing that we're speaking to is that although um, anti-black racism work and anti-racism work anti-sexism anti-capitalism um, work is not necessarily uh, decolonization um, or decoloniality in and of itself it is a very much a part of uh, decolonial work but in and of itself it will never be decolonization work and uh, we were also thinking in terms of uh, uh, decolonization uh, Decolonization speaks more to location, so sort of land or, or how one where one positions and how one positions locates self um, in in land, and decoloniality speaks more to the subject, um, the body itself. So we were thinking decoloniality can exist, can happen while decolonization is still happening, but decolonization. Uh, cannot happen without decoloniality. So decolonizing the mind uh, becomes crucial in the process. So that's all we have to say for now. Uh, we hope that this is useful and, uh, and we look forward to our conversation next week. And Looking forward. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.